بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعد فقد قال الله تبارك وتعالى في القرآن المجيد والفرقان الحميد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وما محمد إلا رسول قد خلت من قبله الرسل وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم الدنيا ملعونة ملعون ما فيها إلا ذكر الله وما والاه وعالما أو متعلما أو كما قال عليه الصلاة والسلام صدق الله العظيم وصدق رسوله النبي الكريم ونحن على ذلك لمن الشاهدين والشاكرين والحمد لله رب العالمين My dearest respected elders brothers friends mothers and sisters listening at home First and foremost we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has yet again given us another opportunity to sit in the blessed masjid in the month of Ramadan after Salatul Asr. My dearest respected friends, in the capacity of an alim, you get to listen to many different individuals, people of different ages, of different genders, and majority of the time when people request that they want to speak to you, nine out of ten times it is because of some level of frustration, anxiety, despair, sorrow, grief, majority of the times. Whether it's youngsters or adults, male or female, you know that if someone has requested that they want to speak to you, nine out of ten times it is going to be because of one of these reasons. And the causes, they vary. The causes, they vary. And this year, my respected brothers and sisters in Islam, more than ever before, we've had to witness this. It's either because someone's lost someone, or parental problems, or issues in the house, domestic issues, spousal issues, friendship issues. When it comes to the different causes, they vary. And then you are trying to make sense of all this. That someone is grieving because they've lost someone. Someone, how do you console a young child? where you've got to tell him that your father is never going to come home again. How do you try and comfort that youngster who is trying his level best to make his marriage work, but it is just not happening? How do you give comfort to that father who is trying to fight for his rights because he wants visitation rights with his own biological children? Or that sister who's trying all she can do to make sure that the house is intact but it's just not happening. How do you comfort such people? This year, as the pandemic was rising, another honorable scholar said that Molana, it seems like the pandemic is not just with the virus but within the homes. Because of domestic problems, it seems that the lockdown is having such an impact where you just don't know who to deal with and how to deal with it. And then you reflect upon the hadith of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, wherein Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Ad-dunya mal'oonatun, mal'oonun ma fiha. That this world is cursed. Everything that's in this world is also cursed. But you go and say these words to that youngster or that adult, or that husband who's lost his wife, or that father who's lost a child, these words, they don't mean anything. This world is cursed. Everything that's in this world is cursed. So again, you start to think that what, how? You're trying to make sense of it all. My respected brothers in Islam, the only way that we can try and make sense of everything that is happening around us, 
whether it be in our personal life, whether it be in our social life, whether it be in our community life, is if we reflect upon the seerah of our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That is the only solution. The only solution, if that father or mother wants comfort or answers that my son has passed away, my daughter has passed away, or marital problems, we will have to look at the seerah of our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That Nabi of Allah, for whom the entire universe has been created, where they say, That it is as though he designed his own being. If it wasn't for the Prophet, the whole universe would have not been created. But yet Allah decided that this very same Prophet of Allah he is going to be born without a father. At the age of six, his mother passes away. And my friends, I always mention this when I narrate these incidents. Don't think it's a history lesson. This is a live commentary of Sirah for me and you today. Father has passed away. Mother has passed away. Taken into the care of Abdul Muttalib at the age of 10. Allah decides that this Nabi has come until the day of judgment so that me and you, we can take comfort from the life of the Prophet. Allah decides that that very bond, sometimes for those who know, know that sometimes the grandparents and grandchildren, their bond is far greater than the biological parents. Abdul Muttalib loved our Prophet wasallam the most. Allah decided at the age of 10, Abdul Muttalib is also going to leave this world. And this is his personal life. I'm not even talking about the persecution of the Sahaba. Thereafter, after Nabuwa, he gets married to Khadija radiallahu ta'ala anha. Uncle Abu Talib is looking after Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Mullah Muhammad mentioned this in Jum'ah yesterday. Allah decides that no, this Nabi that has come, he's come until the day of judgment. My respected brothers in Islam, that Abu Talib, who safeguarded the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from the enemies, who gave security to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He was so dear to Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam at a time when Nabi needed him the most. Many individuals, they say, I needed him the most. I needed my father the most at this stage of my life. When Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam needed Abu Talib the most, Allah decides that Abu Talib is also going to leave this world. And my friends, not just leave this world. Can you imagine the heartbreak of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Abu Talib meant everything to him. Allah decides that Abu Talib is going to leave this world. But that very Nabi who came to give guidance and hidayah to others, Allah decides that for a lesson for my ummah, those parents who are having parental issues, they are trying everything they can, but the son or the daughter is just not listening. And they are scratching their heads, and they are thinking to themselves that what sin have I committed that my son or daughter is not listening. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa did not have a sin to his name. Abu Talib, he passed away as a disbeliever. So much so that Allah mentions in the Quran to Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that, O oh Muhammad, that very uncle who gave you protection, you cannot even make du'a'i maghfirat for your very own uncle. The heartbreak. And he went through this for me and you so that we can take comfort. And soon after Abu Talib passes away, that very wife, Khadijatul Kubra, who gave Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam unwavering support. The moment Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came after Wahi Khadija, she accepted the shahada instantly. He's still grieving from the loss of Abu Talib in the state of a disbeliever. And yet Allah decides that Khadija who looked after all the internal affairs. Few days later, and according to some narrations, two or three months later, Allah decides that no, this Nabi Sayyidul Anbiya, who has come as the leader of the prophets, has not come for himself. He's come for me and you, so that we can take comfort. Allah decides that he's going to break the heart of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Khadija Al-Kubra radiallahu ta'ala anha, she also passes away. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is grieving. My young friends, 
moms, dads, or those who are grieving, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is grieving. And he is saying that very same woman who accepted me when nobody else accepted me, who supported me financially when nobody else supported me, even that woman has been taken away. So if you think this is painful, and I am talking about the personal life of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, my friends, if you think this is heartbreaking, it does not stop there. Every aspect of a person's life we can relate to seerah of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. For those parents who have witnessed their children or their relatives being divorced, only they know how difficult it is. My respected brothers in Islam, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had four daughters. Four daughters. So that someone later on, until the day of judgment can take comfort, Allah decided that not one, but two of the daughters of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam were divorced. Rukaya radiallahu ta'ala anha, Umme Kulthum radiallahu ta'ala anha. And they weren't divorced because of their character. They weren't divorced because of their immorality. They weren't divorced because of financial reasons. They were divorced because of their iman. So those mothers who are killing themselves internally, saying that, why me? Why is this azab in my house? It's not always the case because of sins. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was sinless. Rukayya, umm Kulthum, and they weren't divorced by any stranger. They were divorced by their own immediate family members. Immediate family members. And just when you think that this is difficult as it is, the battle of Badr which took place on the 17th of Ramadan, a moment in history which was absolutely ecstatic for the Sahaba Kiram because they won. They won against the odds, 313 against 1,000. Allah mentions Yawm al Furqan, Yawm al Takal Jam'an. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with his bare eyes, he saw the angels come and fight against the enemy. Everyone is thrilled. It is an Iman booster. They've got so much booty to distribute. And all this excitement, everything is going on. But again, Allah decides that this Nabi has not come for the Sahaba. He's come until the day of judgment. That very same Rukayya who was divorced, Allah decides in the absence, in the absence, in the absence of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the daughter of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam passes away. And I've said the word absence three times because there were many, many individuals who could not be with their loved ones at the time of death. Take comfort from Sirah because nobody thought that in 2021 they'll be able to look at Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and say that he could not be with his daughter. I could not be with my loved one. But Alhamdulillah, I am acting upon the sunnah of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Not just this, for those who could not take part in the burials, my friends, by the time Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam returned to his daughter Rukayya radiallahu ta'ala anha, the hadith states that the Sahaba were already clearing the dust from their clothes because Rukayya radiallahu ta'ala anha had already been buried. Not one child, not two children, besides Hazrat Fatima, Allah decided that every single child of the Prophet he sallallahu alaihi wasallam witnessed passing away during his lifetime. During his lifetime. Why? Why through so much pain? Why? He is Sayyidul Anbiya. The angels are at his disposal. Allah is at his disposal. One after the other, Allah decides that this Nabi has come until the day of judgment. So my respected brothers in Islam, this is Sirah. And if you think, that this is it in terms of personal life, it does not stop here. It does not stop here. Many, many youngsters, when they are questioning themselves, what's going wrong in my house? The issues between husband and wife, they will give you sleepless nights. They will give you sleepless nights. Your mind is going to wonder. You are not going to know what to do if you are not looking at Sirah. Because even this Allah mentions in the Quran and Sirah is a witness to this. When Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had issues in the house. He had issues in the house with his wives. So much so that the Sahaba thought to themselves that Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has divorced his wives. 
Allah mentions in the Quran, Ya ayyuhan nabi, the O Nabi, kulli azwajika, that say to your wives, that if you want the riches of this world, and we, you know when we're saying wives, we're not talking about normal individuals. We are talking about Ummahatul Mu'mineen, the mother of the believers. On one side, you've got the Prophet. On the other side, you've got the wives of the Prophet. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam makes a qasam that I am not going to talk to you for one month. I'm not going to talk to you. And this dispute was about resources. And it wasn't about Ummahatul Mu'mineen. It's so that the youngster of today, the husband of today, the wife of today realize that if it happened to the best of all human beings, then it is inevitably going to happen today. It's going to happen. And Allah makes reference to this in the Quran. So my respected brothers in Islam, this was the personal life of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Heartbreak after heartbreak after heartbreak. Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha. The wife of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You know, today so many individuals, they break their hearts, break tie ships, break friendships, because he said that and she said that. Again, my respected brothers in Islam, you know, Qurban on our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The incident has been mentioned in the Quran and this lesson is for me and you. And this wasn't a trivial issue. It's not like Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has not gone from one tragedy to the other. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decides that even this lesson I'm going to give to the ummah. Where on one occasion the hypocrites, they made an accusation. This accusation wasn't against the cousin of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This accusation was against the most beloved wife of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha. Where they made the malicious accusation that na'udhu billah. She has been in an illegal and haram relationship with someone else. Ya Allah, Sayyidul Anbiya, the most purest of all souls. And he is having to witness a time when not only the enemies are making mockery out of him, not only are the hypocrites merrymaking out of the discussion that is taking place in the streets. Sahaba Kiram themselves, they were questioning themselves that is this a true fact or not? And I don't even have the time to go into what Aisha radiallahu ta'ala went through. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, imagine the purest of all souls having to face the accusation that his wife Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, na'udhu billah, has been engaged in a haram relationship. Why? Why? Why is Allah making the Prophet go through one after the other? Not one after the other. Multiple tragedies and heartbreaks at the same time. So that in 2021, when a situation arises, we look at the seerah of our beloved Prophet, look at an episode in the life of the Prophet, take comfort and think to ourselves that no, if it happened to the best of all human beings, it is going to happen today. My respected brothers in Islam, if you think this is enough, if you think that these tragedies are enough, they just continue one after the other, one after the other. On one occasion, you know, you get some youngsters who come to you and say, okay, Mona, uh, you know, I need advice. I just can't sleep. And then they turn around and say, okay, possibly a majority of the times, many times, where unfortunately they are engaged in a haram relationship and the opposite person is not exchanging text messages. So someone's got girlfriend issues and they think, you know what, this person is not replying, not talking, not communicating, and they are having problems, suicidal thoughts, depression, and this happens on a regular case. And then you look at the seerah of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. My respected brothers in Islam, even this element of the Prophet's life, you know, Allah's Nabi has not left us yatim when it comes for comfort. He's given us all the support on one occasion. Revelation would not come to Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And time passes by. So much so that Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he becomes ill. He becomes ill and the disbelievers are mocking the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The wife of Abu Lahab says to the Prophet that it seems that the shaitan who has possessed you has now left you. So on one side you've got Allah, revelation is not coming, communication has stopped. 
individuals. You know, at time, I remember it was this year, a youngster came and said that my father is not speaking to me. And you think, where, where do you take comfort? Yes, there is some solution that needs to be put in place, but between Allah and Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, communication stopped. So on one side, he is heartbroken. On the other side, the enemies are making mockery out of him. The hadith of Bukhari, he Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he used to go on the top of the mountain and he felt suicidal. In hadith, it is mentioned, our Prophet Sayyidul Anbiya, the one on whom Wahi is coming, Sahaba Kiram are helping him, his wives are there, yet he's going on the top of the mountain. Can you imagine how Allah crushed his heart? That he felt suicidal? And that's when Jibreel would come and comfort his soul. My respected brothers in Islam, Wallah, I am saying this, without seerah, we will not be able to live in this world. We are not going, otherwise we are going to feel depressed. Those sleepless nights are going to continue. And I'm going to mention this once again. Not every tragedy comes because of our sins. Not every tragedy comes because of our sins. We hear this many a times. Yes, tragedies do come because of sins. But Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was masoom. Yet one after the other, one after the other, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had to face this tragedy. When it comes to friends in the battle of Uhud, individuals who the Prophet thought that they were going to support him right until the end. And again, many, many individuals going through crisis because of friendship problems that, you know what, this person gave me his word or business transactional problems. That, you know what, he was my business partner, he gave me his word, now he's gone against his word. Molana, he's, you know, now I just don't know how, how to deal with this person. Qurban on the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, even this episode has been recorded in a hadith. In the battle of Uhud, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he goes with the companions. My friends, not one, not two, not three, but 300 individuals at the crunch time. At the crunch time, not one, not two, but 300 individuals at the crunch time. They broke the confidence of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Sahaba by saying that, you know what, we are not going to engage with you in the Battle of Uhud and they returned back to Medina Munawwara. The Munafikun. Yet look what happened. They go, they go into the Battle of Uhud. They fight. Yes, there were some losses, major losses. And again, look at Hamza radiallahu ta'ala an. That mother who is trying to take comfort, my respected sisters and brothers in Islam, Hamza radiallahu ta'ala, the way he was mutilated, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam could not even recognize who his own uncle was. Tragedy, and these are personal tragedies. Personal tragedies. Financial problems, many, many individuals. Anas radiallahu ta'ala who says that I witnessed my own Nabi, my own Nabi who is promising paradise, my own Nabi, I witnessed that he was hunchback. And he was hunchback at times. Why? Because he did not have a morsel of food to eat. Why go through all these tragedies? Why? The question, my respected brothers in Islam, you need to ask yourself why? Is so that me and you today can take comfort. And all this which I've mentioned in the 25 minutes that I've just been talking about is the introduction. All this. My respected brothers in Islam, Mulana Hansla mentioned the other day that in Bayans, generally you only remember one thing. This next thing which I am going to mention is the punchline. All this, the tragedies that I've mentioned, that his mother had passed away at the age of six, father passed away before he was born, uncle passed away, grandfather passed away at the age of 10, Rukaya radiallahu ta'ala anha, the daughters passing away, and then the tragedies, one after the other, but accusations against Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, spousal problems with his own wives, not talking to them, all these problems, people who came with him to give him food, and he thought it's out of goodwill, and then the angel has to come and say that don't eat this food because it's got black magic in it. So many different incidents. And despite all this, or grieving person, or person who thinks to themselves that my heart is broken, I am feeling depressed, I am feeling suicidal. Despite all this, 
the Sahaba Kiram Ridwanullah Ta'ala Alayhi Majma'een, when describing the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, my respected brothers in Islam, forget everything, remember this. They say, Da Imal Bishri. That he Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was forever smiling. Forever smiling. And you think to yourselves that, you know what, and majority, all these incidents happen after the age of 40. And yet he is forever smiling. What does this mean? What does this indicate? Why is he forever smiling? Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is forever smiling. Mulana Ikram mentioned it the other day in his bayan because he is content with the decree of Allah. And once a person is content with the taqdeer and decree of Allah, then that tragedy does not remain a tragedy anymore. It remains a means to become close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And once a tragedy becomes a means of gaining closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then my respected brothers in Islam, this is not a tragedy, this is a sunnah of our beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And that's why, you know, sometimes when I see someone, an individual, a family member, and like I said, this year more than ever before, and they are smiling, I sometimes think to myself, Ya Allah, only if this person converts his smile with the intention of sunnah, and this very same person, who the whole world or the community thinks that he's bichara, and you know what, he's hit such a tragedy, little do we know that that one person who is content with husband passing away, content with wife passing away, content with children passing away, if he smiles because it's the sunnah of our beloved after tragedy, then Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Man ahabbani kana ma'iya fil jannah, that whoever loves me and my sunnah they are going to be with me in Jannah it's not a tragedy anymore it's a means to become close to Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and after all this you know in our madrasa I generally mention this at least once a year to our staff members as we enter the madrasa we put the awsaf of our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the entrance and I'm going to conclude on this where the Sahaba Kiram they say that Kana Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam da'im al-bishri. That he, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, after all this heartbreak and all these tragedies, he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was forever smiling. Sahla al-khuluq layyin al-janib. That just because he's had a hard day at work or in the office, he never used to come home and he never used to take all his anger out on his children or on his wife. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was soft-natured and lenient. لَيْسَ بِفَضْدٍ وَلَا غَلِيزٍ وَلَا سَخَّابٍ وَلَا فَحَاشٍ وَلَا عَيَّابٍ وَلَا مَشَّاهٍ He was not rough. He was not harsh. He was not loud. He was not obscene. He never used to carry on fault-finding in people. He never was quarrelsome. And the Sahaba say that despite everything, wala yujzi'u sayyi'a to be sayyi'a. That despite what the disbelievers did, he never repaid an evil with another evil. Walakin ya'fu wa yasfahu. In fact, he used to forgive and forget. And this is the concluding remarks that despite everything that went on in the life of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, Sahaba say not only were his he da'im al bishri. يَقُولُ نَاعِتُهُ لَمْ أَرَى قَبْلَهُ وَلَا بَعْدَهُ مِثْلَهُ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمُ The one describing this very same person who faced tragedies in his life multiple times simultaneously, the Sahaba, they say, never have we seen anyone like him, nor before him, nor after him, صلى الله عليه وسلم. So my respected brothers in Islam, to conclude, Things are going to happen in life inevitably. If it happened to the best of all human beings, it's going to happen to us. How we respond is the challenge. And the response of our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was, Da'im al-Bishri, he used to be forever smiling with the decree and the will of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. May Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala give us all the correct understanding. Wa akhiru da'wana and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. My dearest respected brothers in Islam, just one last point. The days of forgiveness are coming to an end. We've got approximately 15 to 20 minutes. The atikaf will be starting very soon. Make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Seek his forgiveness, not just for yourself, for the entire ummah. We do not know whether these days of forgiveness are ever going to come again. May Allah give us all the tawfiq. Jazakumullah khairan.